Hey everybody, Facebook Live, a little bit of crazy connection at my house, and so we had to go to the boat docks. Um, it's just a reminder of why we always end up going to the boat dock anyway, because we have absolutely no internet at my house, and it was uh, not worth the battle or frustration. Might as well just go to uh, the place where you know it's going to work, and uh, just do the Bible study there, so... As I shut my car off, hey Keely, thank you for coming back. I appreciate it. Sorry about all that hassle. I I knew better. I knew I should have just came to the boat docks, but um, here we are. So I say we say a prayer and we do the Bible study. Good to see you, brother Marvin. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for providing a place for us to do Bible study. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for helping us not get frustrated. Lord, please pour your spirit into us. Heavenly Father, be with us. Just protect us, guide us, and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so as we started, we were doing a Bible study on God's love in the facet of how creation is designed to operate. We're specifically looking at the seed principle, and we, we might as well just start over. We didn't get too far into the Bible study. So, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We know that this love is the principle of considering others more important than you consider yourself. This is how God is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God considered the world so much more important than he considered himself that he gave his only begotten son. This love is perfect. This love is unchangeable. And this love is woven into the very fabric of creation itself. Today, we're going to talk about an aspect of this called the design law of the seed principle. Now, the design law of the seed principle, we've touched on it before, but we're going to take that study and isolate it into this. This is a very important study. This study is a, uh, uh, an aspect of design law, which is the seed has everything in itself to reproduce itself. We're going to see that this seed is a symbol for an aspect of the great controversy. That's the battle between good and evil. That's the battle between Christ and Satan. And this seed, which has the ability to reproduce itself after its own kind, today is going to stand for truth or lies. It's going to be ideas. It's going to be information. And we're going to see through this study, through design law, that the seed, as it has the ability to reproduce itself after its own kind, we see that one seed can become one tree. We see that one tree can become one forest, and one forest can uh, fill the entire earth. And we see this, this seed principle woven into the fabric of creation in Genesis 1.12. Genesis chapter 1, verse 12. Good to see you, Cindy. Genesis chapter 1, verse 12 says... And the earth bringeth forth grass, an herb yielding seed, after its kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. So, seed producing after its own kind. Having within itself the ability to produce after its own kind. This is specifically designed and woven into the fabric of creation because God wants us to understand how this operates so that we can take the physical reality and apply it to a spiritual truth. Very important. We know in the physical reality that apple seeds can only produce apple trees. We know in the physical reality that orange seeds can only produce orange trees. Grape seeds can only produce grape vines. And the Bible is giving us this principle so that as we look at the physical truth, we can set our minds on the spiritual reality. And that spiritual reality is that in this world, the Bible says that there are two seeds which affect mankind. The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, And I will put hostility between thee and and the woman between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his 
heal. So two seeds specifically affect mankind. We're going to see why it affects mankind in a moment. But right now, we want to look at these two seeds as representing two sets of ideas. Right, The seed of the woman, that's Jesus Christ. We know that. That's the word of God. That seed represents the truth about God. The second seed is the seed of the serpent. That symbolizes Satan and the lies he tells about God. These two seeds are symbolically representing information from specific sources. One source is Christ, and the seed, the information that he gives is the truth about God. And the other seed is Satan and the information, the lies that he tells about God. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Luke chapter 8, verse 11 says this. Thank you, everybody, for coming back. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us today. I appreciate y'all. Luke chapter 8, verse 11 says, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So two seeds. One seed represents the word of God. That's the truth about God. That's Christ. Because Christ is the word of God. Christ is the thoughts of God made audible. John chapter 8, verse 44 is the second seed. It's the seed of the serpent. It's the lies that Satan tells us about God. John chapter 8, verse 44 says this. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. For when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Two seeds. One seed is the seed of the woman. That represents Christ, the word of God, and the truth about God. The second seed is the seed of the serpent. That is Satan and the lies that he tells about God. And both of these seeds impact humanity in a very specific and important way. Matthew thirteen twenty four. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 says this, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. So there is a good seed which is sowed into the field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, that's the bad seed, among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, least while ye gather up the tares, ye uproot also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather ye the wheat into my barn. So two seeds impacting humanity all the way up until the uh, the time of harvest. That's the, the, the second coming. And in Matthew chapter 13, 37, we find out who is planting the seeds. Matthew 13, 37. He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. That's the seed of the woman. That's the Word of God. That's the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. And in verse 39, it tells us who is sowing bad seed. Matthew thirteen thirty nine. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So there are two seeds that go into the world. One seed comes from Christ. That's the good seed. That's the truth about God. And then there's a second seed. That second seed represents the enemy, the devil, and the lies that he tells about God. Very important. Very important that these seeds are symbols used in the great controversy. The great controversy is the battle between good and evil. It's the battle between Christ and Satan. And the seed in the parables, the seed in the great controversy, represents the information that is given to mankind about God. Christ, the good seed, has the good information. He has the truth about God. Satan 
has the bad seed. He has the lies about God. Very important. In the Great Controversy, we see over and over how Christ is paired up with the same imagery of Satan. These, this is done on purpose to give us different, uh, uh, to give us a different revelation of how the Great Controversy is being played out. In this instance, we see two seeds, a good seed and a bad seed, both representing information about God. There's good information about God, symbolized in the Word of God, or Christ, and there's bad information about God, symbolized in Satan and the lies he tells. But we also see in the Bible that Jesus describes that there are two ways. There's a narrow way which leads to everlasting life. That's Christ in the great controversy. And then there's a wide way. There's a, a wide path which leads to destruction. That symbolizes Satan. Yeah, very important. The Bible talks about two serpents. One serpent deceives the whole world. And the other serpent is uplifted on a pole. And as we look at that serpent by faith, we are healed. That's symbolic for Christ. These are just different aspects of the great controversy being played out. How one serpent represents death, destruction, and lies. The other serpent represents healing, uh, uh, upliftment, and truth. Very important. The Bible says there are two lions, right? One lion is the adversary, the devil, and he seeks to go around and devour and destroy. The Bible talks of another lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And in Revelation chapter 5, that lion is the one who heals the earth. That's very important. So as we look at the great controversy, as we look at different opposing sides, the imagery, the symbolism can be the same. But what that one symbol which represents Christ, it does something that is healing. It's something that's truthful. It's something that's uplifting. The same imagery, which is used for Satan, that brings destruction. That brings lies. That brings death. And today we're talking about the seed and how the seed represents the thoughts and the ideas, right? The good seed represents the thoughts and ideas, the truth about God through Christ. And the bad seed represents the thoughts and the ideas and the lies about God through Satan. This impacts our mind. This impacts the mind of all humanity. And it ultimately has a final destiny, which is character development. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verse 15 says this. Luke chapter 8, verse 15 says this, But on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, that represents the mind, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. So we see that this soil represents the mind of mankind. And there's different kinds of minds. Some, um, some minds, when the seed falls on it, Satan comes and takes that seed away. Some have thorny and rocky ground, which chokes out the seed. It's the cares of the world, which prevent the seed from growing. And that there's another, there's a third option of a good and honest heart, a good and honest mind, where when the seed falls, it's honest with itself, and that seed is capable of developing root and producing self after its own kind. Very important that the mind is the soil and where the seed falls is where the seed holds on to and then it develops into a, a, a character. We're going to see this right now. And we have two choices. There's not a third choice. The two choices are information about God. One is true. One is a lie. As we embrace Either decision, we can either embrace Christ and the truth about God, or we can embrace Satan and the lies about God. Either way, once we embrace the seed, a character development process begins to take place. Jesus describes this in Mark 4, 26. This is why it's very important to be very careful what seed you embrace, because ultimately you're going to reproduce the character which that seed carries. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 says this, a parable about seeds. 
And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. We know that that's information into the mind. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus says it starts as a seed, which enters the soil, which enters the earth. This is information entering the mind. And then he goes into a, a, a development process where he says, then the blade, then the ear, then the fruit. Jesus is describing a character development right? The things that we receive in our mind, either the truth about God, which comes from Christ, that will develop into a specific character. Or we receive the seed of Satan, which is the lies about God. And when we take that into our mind and embrace it, that too will ultimately develop into a character. Because these thoughts, which is what the seed represent, these thoughts always turn into words, Words always turn into actions. Actions always turn into habits. Habits always turn into character. And character always turns into destiny. This is, this is the great controversy. Two seeds, two sets of information, right? If you take the information of Christ, if you take the thoughts of God, the truth of God, that will turn into a word which will turn into action, which will turn into habits, which will turn into character, which will turn into destiny. If you take the lies of Satan, if you take the thoughts of Satan, those will become words, those will become actions, those will become habits, those will become character, those will become your destiny. And this is what Jesus is describing when he says, from the seed to the blade to the ear to the fruit. He's describing receiving information and going through a character process. And this character process has one of two destinies. If you embrace the, the, the seed of the serpent, the lies of God, you end up with a character that is called the works of the flesh. If you embrace the truth about God and take the word of God and embrace the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, you end up with the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 says this. The Bible talks about different health laws because that's a physical reality of a spiritual truth. Every time the Bible gives us designed law principles that are in a physical truth, Shoot that to the spiritual reality and you're going to understand the mind of God in a deeper way. As we consume good food, that's because the truth is, is God wants us to consume spiritually good food. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. This is the seed of Satan as it produces fruit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are made known. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like. Of which I told you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that seed of Satan, that seed of the serpent, when we take it into our mind, it develops into a character which is in constant rebellion against God, which we just described. And that character cannot inherit the kingdom of God specifically because it's in rebellion against how creation is designed to operate. It's very important to understand that when we embrace the lies of Satan, we go through a process where our hearts are finally so hardened against God and our characters are so selfish that we'll do anything to gratify self. And this locks us out of the kingdom of God. Not because God is arbitrary and doesn't want us there, but it's because the natural result of developing this kind of character means that I don't want to be in heaven. The exact opposite takes place when we embrace the seed of the woman. That's Christ. That's the word of God. That develops a character too. And that character is called the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says this, but the fruit of the spirit. That's the what the word of God produces because Jesus saith, 
right? The words that I speak, they are spirit. They are life. So as we embrace that seed, as we incorporate that seed, as that seed develops a lifestyle in us, this is what it produces. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Very important to see that the destiny of those who embrace the seed of Christ or the truth of God end up in a position where their character is in harmony with the, with the design principles of God and they're trusted into the kingdom. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 says this, He that overcometh, he that overcomes the lies, the unbelief, the lack of trust, and the lack of faith, that is the only thing that Satan has to offer you. The same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before the angels. This name represents character. 1 Samuel 25, 25. For as his name is, so is he. And Christ is telling us a, a, a symbolic understanding of how our characters either will be trusted in the kingdom or not. So when Christ says, I will confess his name to my father and the angels, I will tell my father that this person has brought into harmony with design law and we can trust them in the kingdom if you embrace the seed of the serpent this is not possible because the character you develop works in direct contradiction to design law if you embrace the seed of christ the, the seed of jesus the word of god the truth about god will reproduce that in you and you'll be brought into harmony with design law and you'll be trusted in the kingdom of god very important very important that a character in harmony with how existence is designed to operate is what it's all about and it all starts with a seed it all starts with an idea either that idea tells us the truth about god which causes us to love trust and believe him or it's the lies that satan tells which causes us not to believe not to trust not to have faith in God. And what seed you take in and believe and incorporate will absolutely develop into a character. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says this, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, Right. What is sowing? That's taking seed and putting it in the dirt. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If I take that good seed and I sow it in my mind, I will reap the fruit of the Spirit. If I take that seed of the serpent, the lies about God, and I implant that into my heart, I will reap the works of the flesh. For he that sows to the flesh, he that believes the lies, embraces the lies, develops a character of corruption. For he that sows to the flesh shall also reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's very important, that the seed that we embrace is the character of, that we develop every one of us is going through this process right now what are the ideas that you're embracing what are the seeds that you're taking in what is the character that you focus on which will end up ultimately reproducing itself so that you become like the thing that you worship are you incorporating the truth about god into your life are you beholding that are you watching that are you absorbing that and is he by his spirit transforming you from image to image from glory to glory or are we beholding the lies of satan are we being transformed into that image are we reaping corruption there are two seeds in this world one is evil one is good. If you embrace the evil seed, then you will reproduce evil works. Job chapter 4, verse 8. Job chapter 4, verse 8 says this. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap 
the same. It's impossible. If we are embracing sin and living a sinful lifestyle, it's impossible to reap a harvest of righteousness. It's impossible. But if you embrace the good seed, the incorruptible seed, you will reap fruit, life everlasting. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. You know what? Let's go to Proverbs 22 real quick. Proverbs 22, 8. Proverbs 22, 8 says this, He that sows to iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. The two witnesses, if you reap corruption, you will sow corruption. If you sow corruption, you will reap corruption. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by which the word of God, which lives and abides forever right two seeds the seed of the serpent causes corruption the seed of christ is incorruptible and it lives forever hosea chapter 10 verse 12. here we go hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12 says this, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the hardness of the ground of your heart, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. The Bible says that we have two options. There's an evil seed, there's evil information about God, and there's a righteous seed, there's truth about God. These seeds are are symbolic about the information which is available about God in the great controversy. Christ has the good seed. Christ has the truth about God. Satan has the bad seed. Satan has the lies about God. And someday when the harvest comes and the, the fruit is at its fullest, one of two names is going to be given to mankind. It's not three, four, five different names. One name is going to be given to those who have embraced the, the, the seed of the woman, the truth of God. And another name is going to be given to those who embrace the lies of Satan. Revelation 14.1. Revelation 14.1. This is what happens at the greatest fulfillment of those who embrace the truth about God. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. We know that the name represents character. And these 144,000 represent those who have developed the mature fruit of the Spirit to the point where they have replicated the complete self-sacrificing love of God completely. They've replicated that, that seed, that Christ that was in them. Christ reproduced himself completely. This name of the Father written across the forehead, the seal of God. This is what happens to those who take that incorruptible seed and never let it go. Revelation chapter 7 verse 5 talks about another name wrapped across the forehead. This name is Babylon. It's confusion. It's lies. It's rebellion. This is what happens to those who embrace the seed of Satan. Revelation 17.5. Revelation 17.5. And upon her forehead, her, that is a symbol for the prostitute, God's people in rebellion. Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Now, we think this is just the Roman Catholic Church, right? That's part of it. But the greater part is that Babylon is confusion. It's rebellion. It's apostasy. It's anybody who believes the lies about God. That, most of Christianity believes the lies about God. This is very important. Christ showed us the truth about God, never killing, never destroying, never judging, never condemning, right? We look at the God of the Old Testament and we say he was a killer, he was a murderer, he was a judge, he was condemning. And then we say, but Christ is an exact replica of that God. And we say, 
it doesn't make sense so we we leave it be because we can't make sense of it there has to be a a, a final uh, a definitive way to see who god is that can only happen when we look at god's character as being completely loving his anger his wrath his justice his judgment has to be understood in the context of god's love Christ is the one that carries this message. Design law is the truth about how creation operates. That physical reality is constantly telling us of a spiritual truth. Design law and God's love combined tell us and reveal to us the truth about God's methods, God's character, and God's principles. Satan corrupts this entire message so that we no longer trust, believe, or have faith in God. This is so important. The truth about God's love in design law is what Christ has. Satan has only lies about God's love and design law. And Babylon represents those who choose to remain in confusion, those who choose to remain in rebellion, those who choose to remain in apostasy, believing lies, embracing error, and making it their lifestyle. The Bible says that this seed principle this is as long as mankind is on this earth. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. We are not escaping this. This is given to us so that we can be fully prepared and understand what path we are on. Revel, uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. And while the earth remains, seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease the seed principle remains to this day and it's affecting all of mankind and it's producing two people it's producing the wheat and the tares it's producing those who walk in the spirit and those who walk in the flesh it's producing those who are re being reproduced into righteousness or it's producing those who are being solidified in unrighteousness the seed is producing life or it's producing death. There is no third option. And if we want life, if we want righteousness, if we want to walk in the spirit, if we want to be the wheat, we have to follow and believe Jesus, whithersoever he leads us. John 6, 63. John chapter 6, verse 63 says this. John 6, 63, it is the spirit that makes alive. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. The words that Jesus has, the truth about God that Jesus has, that is the seed which we want to embrace. That is the seed that will produce in us the fruit of the spirit. That is the seed that will bring us into harmony with how existence is designed to operate. And the seed principle, which is part of design law, which is woven into the fabric of creation, is there specifically designed on purpose to help us, those of us who live at the end of time, to understand what path we are on, what, what character we are developing. And the seed, when we understand it, this physical reality of the spiritual truth, we can do a self-evaluation and we can say, Lord, I see that I'm developing the flesh and not the spirit. And I can go to Christ and say, Lord, destroy this old man in me, right? Kill, kill the carnal man and resurrect in me your life. Put your seed in me and help me to take precious care of it. The seed principle of design law has everything in it to reproduce itself. This physical reality is telling us of a spiritual truth. There are two seeds. One is Christ and one is Satan. Whatever seed you implant into your heart is the character that you develop. Design law seed principle is purposely put there to tell us of a physical truth for a spiritual reality. And we need to embrace the specific seed that's going to produce righteousness, which is gonna produce eternal life. Earthly seeds only produce earthliness. Worldly seeds only produce worldliness. We need a heavenly seed to come down into our heart, which can only produce heavenliness. That's what we need. When we embrace, when we trust, 
the truth of God. Jesus Christ comes into our heart. He reproduces himself in us. And as we embrace the written word, as we believe the truth about God in the context of his love and design law, the living word makes it a reality and Christ reproduces himself in us. So design law of the seed is all about the truth of God or the lies of God. If you embrace one, that's going to reproduce itself in you. So design law of the seed principle is that a seed has everything in it to reproduce itself. Be very careful what you incorporate into your life because that will directly develop into a character which will directly affect your destiny. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to do Bible study, Lord. And for a moment there, we didn't even think we would be able to do Bible study, but you put it in our hearts just to trust you. So thank you for giving us a space and time to do Bible study. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, pray to be together as a family. We just ask, Lord, that you would bless all of us with your spirit. Help us to have a good, safe, peaceful night. Help us to do your will and help us, Lord, to have another Bible study. Please hold back the winds of strife. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. I love y'all. God bless you. Thanks for coming, Lee Ward. Thanks for coming, Krista. Thanks for coming, Mom. Thanks for coming, Cindy. Thanks for coming, Marvin. Thanks for coming, everybody. I love y'all. Thank y'all.